The OHL always produces a lot of NHL-ready prospects, and this year is no exception. Joining me on today's show is Erie Otters play-by-play announcer Sean Bedard as we're going to look at some prospects on the Erie Otters roster that could slip to one of the Devils' picks. And we're also going to talk about some other OHL prospects that might go in the first round. There's a lot to talk about in today's episode with Sean. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play by play announcer, Devils Rider for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential media member, Trey Matthews. I am joined alongside Erie Otters play by play announcer, Sean Bernard. Now, Sean, you and I have a bit of a history because I called an OHL game, became the second African American to do so in its history back in January when the Erie Otters played the Mississauga Steelheads. And now the Devils don't have a first round pick, but they still have some later on selections. And there's a couple Erie Otters players whose names are floating around and maybe they might find their way onto the Devils organization. Now, before we talk all things OHL and Erie Otters, Sean, how you doing? Trey, it is great to be able to talk with you again. Like you said, uh, we shared a broadcast booth uh, not too long ago at this point, but you know, these are players that you've been able to not only see, but able to call the action for as well. I've been great. Organization's been great. And I can tell you that we're really excited about the prospect of being able to see uh, at least one, if not a few more Erie Otters, hear their name called on drafting and make their way to the NHL. Now, the Erie Otters are definitely no strangers when it comes to uh, some of their alum playing in the NHL. Obviously, you got the big dog, Connor McDavid. You got mm-hmm. Alex DeBrincat, Ryan O'Reilly. I believe o- O'Reilly is the o- is uh, one of the more recent um, Erie Otter players to actually win a Stanley Cup, and definitely a few other players. Uh, Mike Rupp, Devils legend, right there. He's played with the uh, Erie Otters, and I know I'm forgetting some, but your uh, organization is just no exception to like NHL, the bright lights, whatever the case might be. But some of the players that come to mind, like I just said, that might be selected a little later in the draft, specifically from the Otters organization. Obviously, you got Kerry Terrance. Spencer Sova and Andre Molnar. So I talked with my associate, Jersey Joe. He's a fellow writer of mine over at Pucks and Pitchforks, and he is also the host of Heads Up Hockey Podcast. One of the players that we touched on was Kerry Terrance. So according to lines.com, Kerry Terrance is projected to be picked in the middle of the second round. So they have him going uh, to the Chicago Blackhawks, who have the 43rd overall pick in the uh, second round. And we talked about how Kerry Terrance is sort of a two-way player, doesn't show that much flash, but it's something that could be developed. I say he could be a bottom six kind of player. I'll read you the scouting report momentarily, but before I do, I want to get your thoughts. Like, what can we expect from Kerry Terrance if he does fall to the Devils? Yeah, you know what's been great about Kerry is that when he was going into his OHL draft year, Everything that all of the Ontario Hockey League scouts said consensus was he has game-changing speed. He's probably the fastest player from the 2021 OHL draft class. And, you know, that comes with hefty expectation. You expect, okay, speed produces offensive opportunities, eventually produces goals. And when he got here, you could see, you know, sparks of what could be, you know, a really good, solid player. Near the end of his first season with us here in uh, in Erie, the 2021-22 season, is really about the time when you saw some games where you were like, he could be he could be something special. So you had hefty expectations from that going into the 2022-23 season. He took over, you know, 30 goal scorer for us, tripled his offensive output in that regard, and really just was one of those guys where anytime he had the puck careening across the middle of the ice, you're like, something could happen here. So Kerry, really smart player, very selfless, but knows when it's his time to use the puck and try and make a good shot on net. He does have that speed, and that's come a long way. He works really hard in the offseason. And what's been great about him is because he's from Aguasasne, uh, he's had the opportunity to play on both the United States side in international competition and the Canadian side. So 
the people that he has been able to learn under, the names that he's been able to play alongside, the people that he's been able to showcase his skills against, with, and for, that is tremendous education that you cannot discount. And I think he showcased his pure raw ability a lot when he was at the Combine, came in top statistical categories in plenty of the different competitions that came by. But frankly, the kid is just really, really developing well. And I think as he continues to develop going into his draft plus one year, his prospect year, as he gets the opportunity to go to training camps, he's going to be someone who you're really going to say, this was a steal in the draft. He's got that game-changing speed, very smart around the puck, and is only continuing to get better as he gets more games under him. So the scouting report says he's a winger who impressed uh, with a strong work ethic, consistent play without flash, smart, hardworking two-way player who could be relied upon in every situation to give good effort. He pressures the puck well, causing turnovers because of his hard work and determination in the back check. He is very reasonable defensive player who works hard in his end and on the back check once again. Does a great job on the penalty kill of getting the passing and shooting lanes and is willing to be a shot blocker. He reads the play at both ends of the sheet. Although not dynamic offensively, he is effective. And at times, Erie had him on the power play point because of his puck moving abilities. He has a very hard shot, which needs to improve if he wants to be more accurate because he misses the net a lot, hammering pucks wide. And that is courtesy of Bill Plazak. Would you agree with that scouting report? Is there anything else you would like to add? I know you already discussed your end of, of Kerry Terrance, but how would you rate that uh, that scouting report from Bill Plazak? Yeah, I would say that's really fair. I think uh, a lot of people have done a good job in saying that he's a high-end player on a team that maybe hasn't performed to the ability that he is at, maybe a team that hasn't necessarily around him supported him. And it could be a situation where, Kerry, frankly, could be a higher rated prospect if the Otters had been a more successful team the last couple of years. I would say that would be a fair assessment. The thing about Kerry is he has been thrown in every single situation. It's not a surprise to see him out there with a different uh, pair or excuse me, a different line of players out there from game one to game two. It's not a surprise to see him out there on the power play. It's certainly not a surprise to see him on either end of the ice. He really is a guy who I would say outside of what he does on the ice is a natural born leader who's not afraid to fit into a role if he sees himself as the right fit for that role. And I think when you think of a guy who's constantly on the ice, constantly playing in, in different systems, be it power play, penalty kill, five on five, four on four, whatever, you might think that that person has a little bit of selfishness or air, you know, an air of uh, importance to them, but he is as humble as a person as they come, but he's not afraid to speak up when it's his time to speak up. And I think that those are intangibles that you won't get just from watching him play. Those are the intangibles that when you get him in training camp, you get him in the interviews, which, you know, have always been a popular part of the lead up to the draft. Those are the things when you start to see a lot of the true colors. So I think with Kerry, he has so many different skills that when he gets the proper time to be able to have skill development and assessment on where he has the best fit in the different uh, aspects of the game, that's when there's going to be that really good fit for him. And I think he has that ability to be one of those really good secondary forward pieces who can really create depth minutes, depth scoring, and continue to build on what a team does offensively. But if you need him out there for penalty kill, you want a speedy guy who's racing down the ice and killing the puck, he's going to be your man for that as well. Where do you see him getting drafted? That's been the tough question. I can tell you that uh, media regard for him has probably ever since the end of the season only gone like this. I know we've had a lot of people who reached out for interview requests, a lot of people who, you know, you hear the murmuring and the chatter about, okay, like, you know, he'd go here, here. And I have the feeling that he's going to probably be an early mid second round guy. I know some people have said that there's that opportunity or that potential for one of those teams that he's talked to that could like him enough to move him into maybe a, a last one or two pick in that first round. I think that he's bound to probably be about uh, probably in the teens of the second round, obviously for his sake, knowing what he's done, knowing the work that he'll put in, no matter where he's put, I I'd like to see him go a little earlier in the second round, but you know, if, if he were to go late second, early third, 
he's going to treat it as though he was a first round guy and he's going to make sure that that team that selected him knows the player that they're getting and the work ethic that's going to come with it. There's still more in store, but I know some of you might want to see some of these prospects up close and personal when they do make it onto an NHL roster. So let me tell you about game time. So forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time Guarantee means you'll get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Download the Game Time app or create an account and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's get back to our discussion with Sean Bedard, the play by play announcer for the Erie Otters. Take it away once again. Now, let's move on from Terrence to Andre Molnar. Now, Molnar is an interesting case because he joined the team halfway through the year. Well, and by team, I mean the Erie Otters, of course. And they, and the scouting reports are saying that he has a NHL-ready frame. Like, he's a big guy, but there's nothing all that, like, special about him. Like, there's nothing that particularly sticks out. NHL Central Scouting has him ranked 129th amongst North American skaters. Give me the scouting report for Andre Molnar. Yeah, Andre is an interesting case study. You can obviously see the skill. You can really see the ability, and you can really see that focus that he has when he's in the offensive zone, especially in the honeypot. I think he was kind of in an interesting circumstance in the fact that he was so highly ranked when he was playing in Slovakia, and then he had to make that midseason transition to come to North America for the betterment of his ability to be able to raise his draft stock, showcase what he can do for the North American game. And he came out of the gate running. He had seven points in his first seven games, scored his first North American goal in, I think, game six. And then he went on a little bit of a cold streak because I think I think when you, you kind of run into a situation like he ran into, you just go back to default settings of, you know, this is what I was doing well. But I think about the midpoint of his time with the Otters is when it started to hit him, the differences that really exist between obviously just European size rinks and North American size rinks and starting to understand more of what the North American game is like. It's a little different, you know, it's, it's a cliche of course, but you know, North American style hockey is a little more in the corners. It's a little more rough. European style hockey is a little bit more focused on skills, finesse, things like that. And I think those were concerns as well. <clears throat> But I think with Andre, he is really one of those diamond in the roughs who can be developed to be a very lethal scorer because we have seen streaks here in Erie of the really, really offensive prowess that he has when he's clicking. It's just the one thing that I would say is that he needs to have that confidence instilled with him of the ability to play the North American game comfortably. And I think the adaptation that he's gone through since coming to North America has been a big thing in developing his confidence, not only in the game itself, but kind of in the cultural standpoint of, of the United States of North America. So I would say, I think Andre, again, he was very highly ranked when he was coming out of Slovakia. He was a very highly ranked uh, international forward by uh, central scouting. Obviously it took a dip, but you have to understand that this is a guy who had great success in the international game and was able to translate that success quite a bit well in the North American game. So I, I think he's, he's, I think if he would have stayed in Slovakia, he might've been able to see that stock a little higher, but I don't think it would have been as organic as what you're able to see in what he can be because he made that transition for himself. So he, he's an interesting project I'll say. And when we get a full season of seeing what Andre looks like here in Erie, I'll be really excited to see, how that development from we'll call year one last season to year two will look like. So they're saying there's no elite part to his game, but his skating they're they're assessing is above average. And they're saying the strengths is obviously a skating work ethic, competitive nature, like you alluded to under construction, his strength and his playmaking. And according to the hockey writers, they are projecting for him to maybe be a middle six forward kind of player once he reaches the NHL. So uh, my associate, Jersey Joe, he kind of compared um, Molnar to another guy on the Devils roster that is also named Andre, and that is Andre Palat, a middle six forward 
not really all that uh, elite, not really going to be a threat to score on you, but is definitely useful, especially if you are trying to fill out your roster. We saw what he was able to do during the Tampa Bay Lightning's uh, Stanley Cup final runs. And with the Devils, he took a bit of a turn just due to injuries, but Andre Pollock can still be somewhat useful for any team he is on. Would you say that's a fair comparison for Andre Molnar, the, the two Andres? Yeah, I would say that would be overall fair. I think one thing that I've really liked about what I've seen in the limited time that we were able to see Andre this season <clears throat> is that Andre has a really sneaky good shot. He, You can tell that that was something that was huge in his game when he was playing over uh, in Slovakia. And I think that's something where he found so much skill. He's always one of those guys who sneakily finds his way to the front of the net, whether or not he has the puck. And I think that sort of puck presence helps you go a long way. But I think he really would be one of those additive depth kind of guys. You know, one of those guys who when he's out there, you think that there's an opportunity for him to find the back of the net or contribute in some other way. And I think it's just about finding that fit if, if he wants to be the, you know, the catalyst for a play or if he wants to be the finisher for the play. I think once he decides which type of offensive player he is, that's when he's going to take that next step. But he has a great shot. He really has a competitive drive. He just has to figure out which part of his game he really wants to develop. All right, so let's talk about the third and final player on my list from the Erie Otters that could be uh, selected in this year's draft. And this is someone who might be selected towards the back end of the draft. So projected to go maybe sixth, seventh round, which would obviously be the final round. And that is Spencer Sova. So according to Elite Prospects, Sova is an aggressive defender who can also make plays on the offense when the conditions are right. Sova can better uh, contain and erase threats from the puck carriers when he has time to manage his gap. Using his mobility, he can close in on attackers and strip them off of the puck with a sudden jump. He could carry it through zones and walk the blue line with a fine shooting and passing lane. So would you say that's a fair assessment for Spencer Sova? What's your angle on him? I would say that's a fair assessment. And I don't know if I'm speaking out of bias because I've seen Spencer play for his two seasons in the OHL, but I think Spencer Sova is maybe the most disrespected prospect, at least in the defensive class of this year's uh, scouting com or out of this year's central scouting Spencer is a readily available pro-style defensive player. He's a 200-foot player. He's got a wicked slap shot. He really can put the puck in great places, but he knows how to backskate. He knows how to play the defensive game well. He really is a guy who likes to frustrate offensive players, take the puck away from them, shut down passing and shooting lanes. And it's it's a shock to me that he is as high in the, in the central scouting numbers as he is. He's a top 26 scoring defenseman in the OHL, top scoring defenseman on the Erie Otters. Found himself with great numbers overall in his two seasons here. I think the thing that works against him is that because this is his second time around in the draft, he's you know viewed as more of an older player instead of you know a, a young player who's hitting their stride. But a 39 point season this year, 16 goals to add to his numbers. Really, really sneaky good defenseman. And I think this is just one of those guys who he just needs to get an opportunity. I, it, it's going to break my heart if he goes to the draft process again and doesn't get that opportunity to hear his name called or see his name picked by a team because this is a guy who puts in the work, really is committed to the process, and has a lot of opportunity to continue to grow. I know for him, speaking as someone who's seen him play his entire Ontario Hockey League career so far, and again, this is a stable – uh, Iron Man style defenseman. He played in every single game for the Otters the last season. If he doesn't hear his name called, he's going to come out and just rip the league apart next year, offensively, defensively, and he's going to be someone that you're going to watch. He's he's really committed to the process. Great player, and he really deserves better than the hand that he's been dealt. Well, currently he is ranked 182 by NHL Central Scouting amongst North American skaters. He was an assistant captain for the Otters organization just this past season. He appeared in 68 games, had 16 goals, 23 assists for a grand total of 39 points. So I would say, like, with those types of numbers, I would consider Sova to be a two-way type of player because he's able to score, and you just said he's able to defend really well. And I and obviously some people are underestimating him, but given those numbers, if 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 he is available to be selected by the Devils. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be uh, upset about it because I think 
I think he could definitely develop into a decent two-way player at the NHL level. You said he has a great slap shot. He knows how to uh, make smart defensive moves. And he might have a chip on his shoulder if he is not selected yet again in this year's draft. But Soba, uh, according to one of my associates, is projected to go anywhere from the sixth round to the seventh round. So he would have to really like hope that his name is called in the sixth round because I know he'll be sitting on pins and needles come the uh, seventh and final round. But, uh, Sean, we talked about uh, Soba. We talked about Molnar. We talked about Terrence. Before we move on to OHL prospects in general, not for the Erie Otters, is there another player that we should keep an eye out for that may hear his name selected in this year's NHL draft? There's possibility for Alexi Davio. Uh, he's he's kind of like a player that we had his uh, previously, Christian Kyrou, who got drafted 50th overall. He has a lot of the same play style. He plays more of like a 50-foot kind of offensive zone where you'll see him back on the blue line, but he'll contribute to the offense, and he's not afraid to do that. Uh, so he's a, he's a prospect that joined us halfway through the year. In fact, I think his first game, with us was the same first game that Andre Molnar had with us. So I would say keep your ears out for him. He might be one of those guys who surprises you on, uh, on day two, who possibly could go up there. I'm excited to see how he can develop uh, under our uh, head coach, Stan Butler, who will be going into his first full season with the Erie Otters. But I think he's a player who showcased a lot of ability in Sarnia, had some tough translation, at least initially when coming over to Erie. But I think he started to find his proper stride about near the end of the season when the, when Stan Butler took over and was able to at least get him more into the form that plays to his strengths. So I would say he would be the player that you could keep your eyes and ears out for to see how day two goes for him. All right, so keep your ear out for Alexi Davio, and we'll see what happens in that regard. But, Sean, the final thing I want to talk about is let's talk about some other OHL players that might hear their name called a little earlier in the draft, particularly maybe in the first round. So we got someone like Kobe Barlow, and you said before we start recording that uh, the Owen Sound Attack played the Erie Otters a lot, so you're probably very familiar with Barlow and his overall game. Currently, he is uh, ranked 12th by Central Scouting among North American skaters. So what can you tell me about Kobe Barlow? Barlow, really, really solid offensive skill. I mean, his numbers speak for themselves. He's a point plus per game player in his OHL career and, you know, really smart player. Owen Sound plays a very particular brand of hockey. And I think it goes back to the building that they play in where they're rough, they're rowdy, they like to create opportunities, they like to have the jump, and I think Colby Barlow is, you know, a lot of the essence of that. You, you see, he's a smart player, he stays out of the box, but he knows when it's his time to, you know, go in for a hit. His numbers speak for themselves, he scored 46 goals this season, 12 of them were game winners. There's a reason that he's so highly touted, it's because he's had that development under Greg Walters there in Owen Sound. They're a team that continues to compete, and Colby Barlow is one of the big reasons that their offense has found the success that it has in the couple of seasons he's been there. All right, let's talk about another player who's uh, actually ranked just behind him among North American skaters, and that is Kalem Ritchie of the Oshawa General Center. What can you tell me about Ritchie? Yeah, I didn't get a ton of opportunity to see Ritchie, only the two meetings that we had with uh, with Oshawa this season. But Oshawa was a well-oiled machine every single time that we saw him. And, you know, I think, again, with Ritchie, a solid offensive contributor, a very skilled center, um, found his way to contribute offensively. I think the plus-minus isn't very telling for him just because of what you were seeing with uh, with Oshawa this year. Only a, a plus minus of one this season, a, a career, I think, uh, minus six or so. I don't think that's, you know, a lot of people like to point to that as something that kind of tells the story of a, of a player's production. I don't think that's the case for him. I think a guy who really can lead that offense from that centering position, you know, high minutes, didn't miss a lot of games this season. So I think he's one of those players who he's ranked where he is for a reason. He's been able to contribute offensively, but I think he does a good job of containing middle ice. All right. Last one ranked right behind Richie uh, for central scouting. And that is Quentin Musty of the Sudbury Wolves. What can you tell me about Musty? Yeah, again, we didn't we didn't play Sudbury a lot, but uh, it wasn't hard to see where Quentin Musty was. And I know we played a we played a Friday night, I think it was, up in Sudbury back in the middle of the winter. And he the, the game was close when it started. 
and then Quentin Musty turned on, and the game was over from there. So this is a deadly offensive player, very smart, very much a puck hound, loves to drive the net, loves to put pressure on the goaltender. Quentin Musty is a player to watch for a reason, and I know uh, just – in communication from uh, from Kerry, I know him and Kerry really have liked to compete. Uh, it'll be exciting to see where Quentin Musty goes because I think that's an NHL ready scorer. That's one of those guys who, when you see him out on the ice, he's contributing and he's contributing a lot. And I think his numbers speak for himself in that regard. Awesome. So, Sean, we talked about everything. We talked about potential NHL prospects within the Erie Otters organization. We talked about a few key guys that uh, that play in the OHL in general. So. Uh, for my audience, where can they find you and where can they tune in to listen to some Erie Otters games in the future? Yeah, well, you've done me the service of uh, putting my Twitter info right there. So, you know, keep up with me at, at Call Me Bednard. But uh, really to keep up with all the things about, you know, Kerry Terrance and our additional prospects, follow the Otters on Twitter, uh, Facebook, or Instagram. It's at Erie Otters for any of them. And we got a whole new season coming up. Our 2023 24 season schedule was just announced today 68 games of hockey. And Feel free to listen to all of them across the uh, OHL's largest radio network, the Otters Radio Network. And for more information on that, head to ottershockey.com slash broadcast. Hope to talk to you soon. And Trey, hope to talk to you very soon. Oh, you got something planned for me again? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm <laughs> we kidding, can kidding. talk. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you heard it from Sean. Those are some of the prospects within the OHL that could possibly punch their tickets to the NHL. So like I do to close out every episode, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you in the next episode. Sean, thanks for joining me once again. Thank you, sir.